tab in Go. I'm very curious. The stage is yours. Thank you. <laughs> so, hello, I'm Florimond, and this is Tom and Renaud, René. We are all three part of the emitter team. And uh, today I'm going to introduce to you emitter. Uh, I'm going to show you a few use cases, and then I'm going to answer a few questions. But uh, if we don't have time for all your questions, please remember that uh, we have a stand at building K level two, so you can always visit us, have some candy, and uh, ask us all your questions. Um, uh, but first, who are we? Um, we are a young and dedicated company based in the Benelux in Singapore. And what we are dedicated to is preventing you from reinventing the wheel. We notice that in this field, a lot of uh, people try to reinvent the wheel. And uh, we all know that you'd rather, uh, instead of reinventing it, uh, perfect it. That's why we created Emitter and we made it open source. So what's the problem we are trying to solve? Um, the problem is uh, a basic communication problem is that uh, I want to talk to to uh, Tom over the internet to have a chat with him. So what could I do? I could just use a simple socket. That would be easy enough. That's a well-known mechanism. But still, I would need to know Tom's address. And I would need to be available at the same time as him on the, over the internet. And also, we would need maybe to have a secure connection between us with a TLS, for example. So that's not too bad, but that's already three problems to solve. And uh, But more problem arise if uh, more people want to join the conversation. If it's a group conversation with a third, a fourth, or a fifth person, now uh, everybody in the group has to know the address of everybody else in the group. And everybody in the group has to remember to forward messages to everybody else in the group. And then uh, what happens if we want some kind of authentication because we don't want anybody that has the address of some, someone in the group to be able to join the conversation. So that's why usually we a uh, common solution is to introduce some space decoupling by using a published subscribe system. Uh, in a published subscribe system, clients don't send messages to each other directly anymore. They send messages to a central server called a broker. And uh, in this system, they don't need, clients don't need to be aware of each other anymore. They communicate through channels, which is uh, it's a virtual pass to a, to a resource. It looks like this. It's uh, like a slash hello, slash world, slash something. And uh, the, the broker takes care of, authentication, of authenticating people, of uh, forwarding messages to everybody, and uh, maybe of storing messages to deliver them later, and uh, things like that. So it's a nicer solution, but it's still uh, not perfect because what happens if uh, you have a very successful application with uh, millions of messages exchanged every second? then maybe one server is not enough anymore. You need uh, a cluster of brokers to work together to deliver the, all those messages. So you need, uh, as soon as you have several servers, you need to, uh, to have some, uh, ser some message routing to be sure that messages uh, arrive at destination. You maybe don't want to have an interruption of, servers, of service just because one server breaks down or even multiple server breaks down. Uh, you need to be able to scale efficiently, to scale up and scale down, to not waste resources when uh, you don't need that many servers anymore. So that's a lot of things to think about, and that can become uh, very complex very fast. So wouldn't it be nice if there was an off-the-shelf solution to all those problems? Well, uh, that's why we created Emitter. It's a published subscribe platform written in Go, and it uses the MQTT protocol. Um, as I said, it's scalable. It's built to scale horizontally. It's uh, designed to handle high throughput. It's secure. It uses TLS encryption and expirable channel keys and permission attached. Uh, persistence, it's, uh, we currently provide two mechanisms for persistence. One is an in-RAM uh, store. So uh, as uh, the name suggests, it's uh, stored messages in RAM, which means it's very fast, but messages are lost if the server breaks down. Uh, the other mechanism is a um, uh, SSD optimized store that uses Badger. Uh, it's lightweight because it uses the MQTT protocol, uh, so it was designed with IoT in mind. And the, uh, the API is very easy to use. I'm going to show you the API just uh, after uh, showing you a few use cases. Uh, the first use case that uh, we could think about is uh, a real-time chat 
So that's basically what we discussed so far. Uh, there is not much to say about it, that's a chat. Uh, you can imagine that you have a sub-channel per rooms and people subscribe and publish to rooms. Uh, that's, by the way, a sample that we have on our website, so you can uh, try it on our website and maybe uh, use it on your own website. Um, another use case is uh, smart cities. We had uh, that guy in Turkey that explained to us that uh, in uh, big Turkish cities, uh, garbage trucks don't go directly to the landfill. They go to intermediary bins to empty their load. And uh, <coughs> uh, so they have to monitor, of course, the, the filling rate of each bin so they optimize the route of the garbage trucks because they don't want, of course, a garbage truck to empty their load in a bin that is already full. So you could imagine there is a, a sensor in each bin and uh, there is a dashboard uh, that subscribe to all the bins with a filling rate slash, um, this, uh, this is wild, a wild card that means that uh, it subscribed to every sub-channel. Another, another use case is OT monitoring. So we had that guy that had the um, crematorium. So uh, a crematorium has various pieces of machinery and each machinery had various sensors. For example, there is a, a silo that has a temperature sensor, and there, there is also a chamber that has a temperature sensor. So the silo would uh, publish to uh, slash silo slash temperature, and the chamber would publish to slash chamber slash temperature. And uh, this guy wrote a dashboard in uh, Python because uh, we have a Python SDK. Uh, that uh, has, uh, for example, one gouge that uh, subscribe to uh, plus temperature. Plus is another wildcard that we use. That means uh, it, it replaces one level, basically. So it means uh, any, any level uh, slash temperature. So it subscribes to all temperature sensors. Uh, another use case is online games. This is a demo I wrote to uh, demonstrate that uh, emitter is uh, has very low latency. It's a uh, Bomberman. I guess we all played that game. Here I'm playing with that... Uh, with my brother over the internet, and uh, as you can see, there is very uh, it's very fluid, uh, and I'm using uh, almost no pass uh, prediction. So it's really the real time messages that are sent very fast. Uh, uh, here I made it so there is one sub channel per game ID and one sub channel per game ID per player, and each player published to its uh, own uh, channel. And uh, each player also subscribe to uh, the game ID slash all, which uh, means that um, which means that they all receive messages from each other player, messages uh, mainly of uh, position updates. Um, finally, I'm going to show you a bit of the API. So uh, this is how the API looks like in JavaScript. You just do uh, emitter dot subscribe to subscribe. Um, you provide the key, a channel, of course, that you want to subscribe to. And uh, uh, you can have uh, an option which is last, which uh, provide the uh, X number of messages that you want to receive, uh, which were stored on the channel. Um, to publish, you just do an emitter.publish, which uh, where you provide uh, the API key again, that may not be the same key, that could be another key with other permissions. Uh, here I publish to uh, chat slash Florimo. And uh, of course I provide my message, which uh, here is a string, but it could be a binary message, any kind of message actually. And uh, there is an option, the TTL, which is the number of seconds I want the message to be stored. Uh, so that, that's all you need to, to do to start exchanging messages with the brokers. Uh, there is another uh, thing I want to talk about is the presence uh, feature. It allows you to monitor uh, which person, which devices are subscribed to a channel, which is uh, obviously very useful for lobbies, for example. To call presence, you just do an emitter of presence. You provide once again an API key, then uh, the channel you want to monitor, and then you have two options, two parameters. Uh, the first parameter is status. 
If it's set to true, you will receive immediately a list of people that are subscribed to the channel. Uh, the other parameter is uh, changes. If it's set to true, you are going to receive events once a person uh, subscribed to the channel and once a person unsubscribed to the from the channel. Um, so emitter is open source. It's uh, under a GPL license. It's not free software, but it's still free as in free beers. Uh, it, you can set it up in minutes using a Docker container and host it on your own servers. Uh, otherwise, you can use our cloud if you don't want to care about server, about scaling, and uh, then you pay per usage. Um, recently, uh, since last year, we've enjoyed a lot of attention uh, on GitHub. Uh, as you can see, it's a graph uh, of the Stargazer on GitHub, and uh, we enjoyed a sharp increase since last year, and that brought us a lot of contribution, uh, some small, some bigger. Some as small as uh, typo fixes in uh, the, the, our documentation, but that, that's still nice to have. Some bigger, like uh, to the core emitter, uh, to the core of emitter. So currently, uh, at the time, we only had, for example, uh, keys per root channels. Now we uh, we un we have keys per sub channel. So uh, that was an external contribution that brought us there. Uh, so that that's very nice. Another kind of uh, contributions that we like is uh, is SDKs. Uh, we currently have five SDKs in Go, C Sharp, Python, JavaScript, and Java. Uh, some of them were extensively reviewed by the community, which is very very cool. Uh, but we would like to have more SDKs. So if you're interested in the project and you have a favorite language that is not listed there. Uh, please uh, visit our website where we have a page where we describe how to communicate with uh, our server and it's very easy so you can contribute and uh, we'll be very happy to share your SDK. Uh, now I don't know if we have time for questions but uh, please remember that we have the stand at level uh, 2 of the building K. So. Thank you very much. Uh, we have, uh, yes, first an applause of course. We have time for one burning question, if someone has. Uh, otherwise, you can visit them at the stand. Anyone who really desires to ask something? No? OK. Thank you very much. And uh, can we ask the next speaker to come to the front, please? Also, another request. As you see, a lot of people entered the room by now. Try to compress yourself as much as possible. Sit next to people that you don't know. It's good to meet them during this event. Uh, and make sure that everyone can have a seat. I have a little present for you guys as well. Wait. Oh. Notice that you're not uh, talking about the mic, and I'm trying to tell you. Um, we have two microphones. <coughs> Thank you. 
afterwards, if there's like time, we can ask one or two questions. Uh, we can run around and give the mic to the to the people in the audience. Yeah. But then you will also maybe have to use this to answer. Uh, we'll see. It depends on the